Hey guys and girls, welcome back to the channel and the second episode of this phenomenal build of this amplifier, which is my slow drag amp. It is essentially a Jet City Custom 22, which has been converted as close as possible as I could get to a Soldano SLO sound. So today I am gonna be doing channel two. This is the exciting one because this is when I basically add in the insane SLO overdrive sound and it is absolutely insane. It sounded so good. Also in this episode, I'm gonna be adding in an upgraded transformer and also a choke. I'm gonna show you what the changes make to the tone of the amplifier as well. So sit back, enjoy, and let's get going. Alrighty, modifying the gain channel now. This was a lot of fun to do. There were quite a few steps in this one, so um, I'm gonna play you some more music from my album Circle of Fire. Hope you enjoy it. You can check it out on Bandcamp if you would like as well. There are about 16, 17 steps to do uh, with this modification. So it did take a little while, but it was so worth doing. All right, enjoy.
And there you go, all of the mods are done for the SLO channel. You can see some of the mods which I've done, like these capacitors here, the uh, Sozo caps, which I like to use when I'm um, doing these jobs. Uh, the resistors, the change of the resistors you can't see because they're the same blue color. I changed this one, number 16. Um, and uh, these little blue ceramic caps as well. There are a couple of them in the circuit as well and it's all done already uh time to plug it in fingers crossed it all works not like first channel where it didn't work <laughs> My goodness did you just hear that <laughs> did you hear what I just heard oh man I wish you guys were in the room with me when I was playing that it was insane um, exactly what I was shooting for that's wicked sensation turn it's nuts I've got a huge smile as you can see 
I'm super happy about it. Um, it sounds absolutely incredible. Now, um, the thing about it, which I noticed also was that it has a lot of saturation on it. So there is one further mod which I made um, just this morning. Discussed it with um, Stefan yesterday again. And uh, now I actually have an overdrive and a crunch mode. Yeah. <laughs> just like the SLO. Now the crunch mode was not in the instructions which came from Epic Amplification. So this is a mod which uh, Stefan helped me to do and um, it's one that I'm going to be sh able to show you because we figured it out. The rest of the mods are obviously the property of Epic Amps and you know I'm not going to share them. You can reach out to Epic for, for that stuff and the kits and stuff. But um, this one I am going to show you. I love the sound of this. this was, it was just incredible to play. There are still more mods to go. Anyways, I'm going to show you this mod and I'll show you what I did and um, then I'm going to take it into the studio, do the clips again um, and show you how the amp sounds now. After that I will add the transformer and um, then I'll put the choke in after that as well so that you can hear what the stages actually do to the, the tone of the amplifier. There's one final stage which I am going to do but I'm waiting for parts. Let me show you the mod that I did to give this a crunch channel. So you'll notice that this amplifier now has six switches. <laughs> three which I've added, it came with three switches, the uh, bright on and off the channel switch and also this uh, low fat and uh, mid boost switch. The switches I've added are the uh, clean modes, the uh, SRV uh, which uh, kicks in some overdrive and some mids and now we've got this one as well. This one is actually uh, switching between clean and crunch now. Um, and this was a pretty basic mod which, uh, which we did. So I spoke with Stefan and um, he um, pointed me in the right direction. I knew that I needed to um, make an alteration to uh, the second stage, um, the gain stage in the amplifier, which is here on the schematic you can see here. This is the second tube here, V2. Now, um, coming off the plate here, we have R18. Now, R18 is a one meg uh, resistor. So um, what Stefan said was um, reduce the value of that resistor. And um, how I've done that is with a switch which goes here essentially. And it switches in a 180K resistor which drops the complete value down to 150K. So what it essentially does is it reduces the saturation on this stage by about half. And um, you'll hear that when I um, take this into the studio and um, play it for you. So um, I'll show you inside the amp. Alrighty, so um, we have the switch mounted here inside the amplifier. And if you have a look at the bottom here, there's a resistor mounted there. Now this is a 180K resistor. And basically I've got it attached to each side of the switch. And then on the middle terminals, I've got two wires, one red, one black. And um, basically when the switch is in the down position, which is the default position, um, the resistor is engaged. And when it's in the up position, it's disengaged. So in the down position, it switches everything to 150K on that R18 resistor. And when it's in the up position, it's one meg and basically we get more gain. So down position is the crunch channel, up position is going to be the overdrive channel with full beans basically. Alrighty, so over here you'll see that this resistor here is R18 and all I've done is I've connected one side, the red side to one side and the black wire to the other side. And that's the mod. It's a really really simple mod, it's very very effective. It was pretty cool to play just a second ago. Tested it out, make sure it was working before I installed the switch in here and drilled the hole and everything. And um, it was fantastic. Basically gives me two modes on the overdrive channel. So there you go. Very, very simple mod for you guys. All right, I'm going to hand over to Stefan who's going to explain why we did it in this way and the technical aspects of this mod. Okay, so I uh, just explained what we did. Jay wanted to have um, an additional crunch mode. And um, the easiest solution to me was uh, adding a resistor 
to the input of the uh, V2B. The regular resistor is a, a 1 Mac and I suggested to, to put in a 180K parallel to the 1 Mac and this will lower the uh, re input resistor to about 150K. And if it is, uh, we, we wanted to, to make it switchable, so we added a switch uh, to make it either one or the other position. Um, if it's on 150K, there is a, a lower input for the tube, so the tube does not that much saturation. So this is a very, very simple mod to add a, a crunch mode to the amplifier and you have uh, two modes to work with. So there you go, that's how we achieved the crunch mod on this amp. Really simple, elegant solution to it. And be sure to check out Red Stuff's YouTube channel and their website as well. Stefan's an awesome guy and he's been so helpful through me building every single amp that I've built so far. So kudos to Stefan. sounds amazing first channel obviously very very clean I can get dirty tones when I switch over to the SRV mode which is really handy because that's a really really fat sounding mode as well it has a lot of mids and um, that's what it's supposed to do but it also ups the gain as you heard on the clips and you know if I want a crunch sound I can always max out the gain on that first channel even in the cleaner modes and I get a really nice beautiful crunch sound the one thing that really comes across now is the clarity 
and how the um, EQ has changed a little bit, the voicings changed off the amp. Now um, channel 2, the red channel which is on at the moment, fantastic, absolutely amazing. I had to add that switch because there is so much gain when it's in, um, in nuts mode. It's in absolute insane crazy nuts mode at the moment. So, you know, when I flick it to the down position, it's crunch mode. There is so much gain on tap. It's just unbelievably gainy. Um, and, you know, in um, overdrive mode, I'm going to call it crunch in overdrive mode. Uh, there is just an absolute ton of gain, which is fantastic don't need a boost pedal with this amp at all you just plug in and play you can get every game stage you want <laughs> alrighty so they are the sounds of the modifications now what I'm gonna do is change the transformer I'm gonna install the choke at the same time just so that it's on the chassis I'm not gonna connect it initially then I'll bring it back in here do some more clips then I'll add the choke do some more clips just to show you the difference in in tone I may just um, do the uh, clips of the overdrive channels because um, you know you know what the amp sounds like now we just want to know what the transformer upgrade is going to do and the addition of the choke and then lastly after I've done that I'm gonna install um, an external bias and a pair of 6v6 GT tubes in here yeah <laughs> The original Soldano SLO comes with um, 6L6 tubes, so uh, my friend Stefan said uh, you really need to put a pair of uh, uh, 6V6 GTs in there. So he's talked me through the process, it's not very difficult. Um, I have some tube converters which are going to fit right into the amp, I'm not going to have to do any mods to um, tube bases or anything like that. So I'll show you how I'm going to do that as well. Alright, first thing, let's get that transformer changed, add the choke as well. Alrighty, check it out. New transformer installed. There's the old one. So um, I took this off. Oops, <laughs> you can't see on the video there. I took this one off, which is the um, stock Jet City transformer, and I replaced it with this Oxford Electronics uh, transformer, which was highly recommended by my buddy Stefan. Um, so I wanted to try out what the difference would be in tone, and um, really impressed with this. Sounds great. Really, really good. Um, more um, high frequencies, high mids coming through. Um, this transformer sounds good. This one just sounds better. I'm going to take the amp into the studio and um, do some more clips so that you can see what the before and after sounds like. Um, here's the choke as well. <laughs> it's a big choke. Now this choke I actually got when I built um, my Plexi. So uh, you'll see the two transformers in there. They were from a company in Italy called um, called In Mad Out Transformers. And they'd actually sent me a choke, but um, I had another choke which was on order, which is down there. You can just about see it. So I installed that one because the, um, the holes for the screws were in the correct place. And this one is just huge. <laughs> but it gave me a chance to install it on here now it's not connected up right now because I wanted to check what the sound was like um, without the choke first and then I'm going to connect the choke up and uh, then do some more comparisons to see what the sound change is like with the choke as well I know this is going to make a difference now inside the amp it looks pretty much stock and um, I did that on purpose as well because I wanted to do neat work. So um, the only way anybody would know if they, is if they knew what the color scheme was. So this white wire here, which is going to the 16 ohms, is usually uh, purple or violet on the um, original lamp. And then this orange wire is brown. Look, it says brown there on the board. <laughs> um, and that's pretty much the only way anybody would know. And the red wire is a little bit crinkled because um, I didn't have too much of that left and it had been um, twisted with some black wire for some um, filament um, wire which I did for my plexi. So um, inside wouldn't be able to um, to tell and I did all of this off, off camera because it, I needed to take the board completely out which meant taking all the pots off, all the switches off, taking this out as well. Um, relatively 
long process but not a difficult process um, and then um, just re-drilling holes because the old transformer had four screws the new transformer just has two screws and also installing the choke as well which is it's around there underneath the board it's around there and the output transformer is somewhere around here as well so nice neat job there so I'm gonna get this in the studio and play some more clips So there you go, there is the amp with the new transformer. What did you think? I wanna know, leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. I did the before and after so that you could see what change the transformer made. Um, in the room here, uh, you know what I'm noticing? More definition uh, with the transformer. There's a little bit less gain and a, a little bit less of the very, very high kind of like, you know, scratchy high end, more mid range. Uh, just a little bit just a, a touch it's kind of like just EQing it a little bit and you know with the um, uh, the high end I can always dial in a little bit more presence or a little bit more present um, treble um, so I'm not too worried about that but the transformer is sounding pretty damn good it's sounding pretty fat as well now um, the fact that it's a little bit warmer will probably work in the favor of the amp because it was quite bright with the old transformer now when I put the choke into circuit, which is the next thing I'm gonna do, it's literally just two wires, it'll take like you know 10 minutes to actually do that mod. Um, when I put that in, it's gonna brighten up the amp a little bit more. So um, having a bright amp to start with and then putting the choke in, which is gonna clean up the, the power supply in there, um, it's gonna brighten it up a little bit, up those um, upper mids and highs a little bit more. You know what, this transformer might work more in the favor of, of that setup. <laughs> so, um, 
there you go there's the transformer mod very very cool transformer by um, oxford electronics um it, it's also known as cahill cahill do transformers for various things preamps and things like that like um, audio preamps in you know um, uh, studio equipment and stuff like that so um, very cool company and that transformer is sounding cool it's staying for the time being i think it should stay for the time being. what do you think let me know comment 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 <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, let's put the choke into circuit. I say let's, but really, it's going to be me doing it, doing all the work. You guys can come around and help me if you want, but you know, otherwise I'll do the work. <laughs> Alrighty, I'm going to get this back on the bench. Alrighty, the um, choke is installed, and it literally took just a few minutes. These two black wires going to this point here, to R52. Uh, they're the wires to the choke and the choke is obviously down there really really easy addition now the reason I added a choke to the amp is because I saw a video that Jason Tong over at Headfirst Amps had done and how it changed the sound I really liked the addition of the choke so I decided to add one into this amp as well but I'm gonna hand over to Jason and um, let him tell you what the choke actually does. Over to you, Jason. Hi, Jay. Hi, everybody. It's Jason here from Head First Amplification. Jay's asked me to talk to you about what one of these is all about. It's a filter choke. Okay, this is one that you can buy aftermarket and add to your amp. Set up for a JCM 800 or a Marshall you know, 2203 style amp. The filter choke is a really important part of the power supply line, right? So if you look at the top of your amp, you'll often see a power transformer, an output transformer, and sometimes one of these little guys. I say sometimes because not every amp has a choke, but it's a really important part of the power supply and therefore the tone and the feel of your tube amp. The filter choke is actually an inductor, so which is effectively magnetic core with a coil around it, a wire around it, right? And using the wonderful properties of physics, this thing will do two things for your tube amp. Number one, it'll block AC signal from the power supply line, right? Which is really important. Your tube amp wants a really nice, steady DC voltage to operate. So you'll often hear people talk about plate voltage of an amp. You know, my 450 volts plate voltage, right? That's a DC. It has to be nice and steady. The inductor will actually repel AC current, right, and only allow DC to pass through. So it's wired in very early in your power supply, right? So as soon as you, you plug your mains in, go through the output, uh, the power transformer, it gets rectified, it gets filtered with filter caps. The very next thing that happens, it'll go through the choke, right? And so as it passes through and creates a screen supply line, supply for your phase inverter tube and the rest of the preamp tubes, the filter choke is doing its job to repel the AC and you get a nice steady DC line. The second property of an inductor, which is quite amazing, is that it stores energy as a magnetic field, right? So why is that important? Well, if your current drops um, as you, you know, use the amp and hit it hard and you've got it cranked you can get a, a, a fluctuation in the current the inductor or the filter choke will the, the magnetic field will change and it will release energy back in as current all right so it can store magnetic energy and release it as electrical energy giving your amp a bit more bounce so there you go that's the purpose of the choke really huge thanks to jason go and check out his channel head first amplification i'll leave a link up here somewhere and the description box below as well so that you can go and check out all the really really super cool stuff that he does and uh, the next amp i'm going to build is going to be a head first build yeah so stay tuned for that all right time to plug this in see how it sounds with the choke
Now that sounds awesome. That's maximum gain on the amplifier and it's working really well. Um, when I changed the transformer, the bass had gotten a little bit loose and um, I kind of knew that the, uh, the choke would tighten it up a little bit, but it is just perfection now. Sounds so, so good, yay! Alrighty, so um, huge thank you to Jason. Uh, he inspired this mod and um, like he told you, uh, the uh, the choke really kind of filters out all of the the rubbish essentially in the power supply more of it makes it much cleaner and you can see the results you can hear the results in how the amp sounds now it's reacting really well as well feels really really good to play and there's an immediacy to it as well which I absolutely adore I'm really really liking how it's playing now again when I change the transformer the response was a tiny bit loose and I felt that under my fingers um, but now it's just just working beautifully alrighty one final mod to do actually two final mods to do actually three final mods to do <laughs> so the uh, Soldano um, Super Lead Overdrive actually uses uh, 6L6 tubes and uh, my buddy Stefan had said why don't you put some 6V6s in there I said, can that be done without changing the bases? And he said, yes, because you can get adapters for the bases. But I am gonna need to put external bias points on this amp first in order to re-bias the amp. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm also going to add a depth uh, control and um, a negative feedback control right on the front, just like on my purple number 39 head. Kind of figured I'd do it. Um, so that's the second mod that I'm gonna do. And the third mod, need to do the aesthetics of the amp. Build a new grill, put the new logo on there. I'm gonna cover it in real snakeskin. Yeah. That's everything for today, girls and guys. I hope you enjoyed that. Remember to tune in next time when I'm gonna be changing the power tubes to 6v6s and I'm gonna be working on the aesthetics of the amp as well, covering it in real snakeskin and doing lots of very very cool labels doing that new grill on it as well it looks so fantastic now have a fantastic week and if you haven't done so already please do remember to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification so you don't miss any of the episodes in this series of videos have a great week and I'll see you next week with the next installment